I don't even know what that means. Mims be later than West Africans. Do West Africans be late? <laughs> anyway, y'all, I'm back. Uh, if you saw me a couple days ago, I had hurt my toe. So I really wasn't in the best mood, but I'm back now. I didn't have some Casamigos. Monique then went in, uh, and we got to talk about it. So like the video as the intro plays, because we are back at it. I was listening to Make It Make Sense. Shout out to Make It Make Sense. Thank make you. It makes sense to me intellectually. Says Mims, who a lot of people have been asking to be on the show. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Make sense. Make it make sense. You know what was up. Oh, my God. Big Mims. Surfer. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Feel about the things that you say. Yeah, make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dreams. Hey, let, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Make it make sense. Feel about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dreams. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. This is this is. My wife right here. See what I'm saying? This is what I do. That's what I like. He came in here, wanna act like he was all hard and manly. He come in here acting hard, we're gonna see how hard he is. <laughs> Somebody said, when they gonna let you on TG TGIF. I love the show. Um, I don't know. So y'all got to let them know that you want me to be on that show, I guess. I don't know how that works. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely do a week of TGIF. Okay, y'all. So, I'm y'all know I call it like I see it. Uh, and I do give Monique a hard time. But at this point, Monique is like, Before, I'm going to keep it to myself that actually, I think I'm a little bothered now. Because why is it that the... <laughs> so... In Monique's defense, because y'all know I do, I do be getting on Monique. D.L. Hewley did an interview about her. So this is a direct response to the interview he did that dropped today with Jason Lee. So she's not just flying off the handle. Um, and they used it in the title. Let's see. They used her name in the title. Let's see. Um, okay, it says DL Hewley talks Cat Williams beef, beef with Monique, being doxxed by Kanye. So you use her name in the title. We all know how Monique is. Monique said, You say something, I'm gonna say something back. Uh welcome, Sandra. We're dysfunctional. We don't agree much around here, but we respect each other. So <laughs> welcome to the family. So let me give y'all a little taste of what DL had to say. Oh, where is it? Okay, here we go. Oh, wait. Hold on. Y'all saying y'all can't hear this whole clip that I played? Y'all can't hear it? What is going on? Okay. Was victimized. My dad is so <laughs> angry with me. She has spoken. Here we go. I will say that whatever was said, 
It's not for me. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Whatever it says, open up a womb in my daughter that we're arguing about right now. Mm -hmm. I've never had much in my life, mm -hmm. but the love of my children I've always had. Mm -hmm. And something jeopardizes that, I can never forgive you for it. Mm -hmm. Before it happened, I knew it was happening because my, my daughter called me. Mm -hmm. And like, this is going to happen. And she's in therapy and crying because she knew that people are gonna automatically know about what had happened to her before and what, and it, it makes, it just, I'll never forgive you for that. Mm -hmm. That now I'm in a compromised situation where I want something I genuinely love. I ain't like, I ain't loved a lot. I love this, I love my children. Mm -hmm. And to feel like I couldn't protect them and, and that that plays out over and over again, mm -hmm. it's something I won't forgive you for. Mm -hmm. I won't. So you talked about it, I wasn't gonna bring it up, but since we're there. So she brings up your daughter having gone through a very personal experience yeah. where she was victimized. My daughter's so <laughs> angry with me, she hasn't spoke to me in weeks. Still from that? Yep. But, but. Okay, y'all, so he's kind of speaking in code. If you are new to this whole situation with D.L. Hewley and Monique, what happened was D.L. Hewley admitted in an interview that he was really close friends with a person. We don't know if it's man or a woman, and that is a, important because Monique brings it up later. He was such close friends with a person that when the daughter came and basically said that that person was taking advantage of her, he didn't believe it and didn't really protect her. So when things got heated between Monique and DL, and DL she brought up the situation. I'm just going to be honest with you. Monique, I would not have known about anything involving his daughter being assaulted until you brought it up. So, you know, just saying. If you didn't bring it to the masters, I would not have known and a lot of people would not have known. So that's one of those things where even though you're going back and forth with him, you know, if he were to bring up your relationship with your son, then it would be the same. It would be from it would be in the same sphere. This woman is now back in therapy and she has been victimized. Um, so, uh, you know, it is what it is at this point. I don't think the beef can get corrected and the girl is back in therapy. It wasn't you that brought that. Doesn't make a difference. When somebody's gone through something, they don't want. It's their trigger. It's, and then when they're triggered, what do you do? Yeah. yeah you lash out. Y'all, I get it. DL brought it up. But I'm saying for the masses, a lot of you guys might have known. I did not know that story until it came out. So if the person who was the subject of the story is now back in therapy, then I and I think it's safe to say that, in my opinion, is revictimizer. Um, somebody says me either. She repeated what he said. Right, Adrian. But we got to think about it in the grand scheme of things. Nobody's really checking for a D.L. Hewley interview. Not that much. But everything that happened during the Monique Club Shay Shay interview has been magnified. Everything that Kat said in the Club Shay Shay interview has been magnified. Even if she brought it up, I think it's safe to say she could still apologize to the victim. Like, you know what? I was going at your dad and... I was making a point of how I view him because he came in my family. But as a victim of assault, Monique, the victim is now in therapy again. Do I, When I heard that he didn't take the word of his child to me, that was all I needed to know about D.L. Hewley, just in my opinion. But that does not mean that we can't say, hey, you reopened that wound for that woman. Um, we don't know. We just know she's back in therapy. And I'm saying for people like myself, I didn't know this story even existed. I didn't even, I didn't know. Um, um, let me see what y'all are saying. DL is wrong. That's all him. DL is wrong. I'm, I'm not taking, I'm not saying DL isn't wrong. I'm saying that I didn't hear the story from DL. I heard the story from Monique. But okay, 
So in Monique defense, this is what she was replying to. Because I know a lot of people are like, why is she talking again? Monique then told y'all, you mentioned my name. I'm coming back. Um, Terry says she was not victimized by an adult. So it was a kid that he respected? Mm. Just my opinion. Um, but since then, if you don't know, my favorite line. How do you suck the dick of a coward? <laughs> Autumn and Lay, what's up? She said, good evening, straight shooters. Please hit that like button. Thank you. Oh, uh, we got like 1,300 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. Let's get right into what Monique said, because she went in on just about everybody. Um, her and daddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, my sweet babies. Hey, daddy, girl. I need you to. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to do. All right, y'all. We we here, and we can have one old conversation. But y'all know this technology shit. It throws us right. Are we doing better? Cause our Stephanie hooked us up, and we not at the bottom of the screen. The top. One eye out. Right. And I got to say something to my baby. Um, I believe it's Kevin on stage. Listen, we trying to get the, the screen where it's balanced. Wait. Now, I don't know that this is true. You're saying that DL sent his daughter to trial for the Cosby show? EH Bunny, where did you hear that? Now, this is alleged. We don't know. I'm, this is not confirmed. But did anybody else hear that? Okay. Just checking. That's I oh yikes. Our discussion today are gonna be TAT. T A T. And that stands for Truth, Accountability, and Trauma. And and before we get started, Daddy, I want to say something. Kick it. You know what? Oftentimes there'll be some people that say, Mo, why y'all always be talking? And why y'all because do you know one thing our community suffers with is silence. We have been taught, keep the, keep the business in the house. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. And then there's the trauma. Because what happens oftentimes in the household, we keep it in. We don't say anything. We stay silent. And then you live your life in that trauma. So the reason why we continue to have these conversations is because we taught us in our community suffering. And addition to that, there's a level of embarrassment that we've been taught to carry that started from slavery and that level of not identifying uh, when you have a problem because we've been taught to get through it so we could go back to work when sometimes we need to be working on ourselves and dealing with the trauma that we've experienced so we can be better when we do go back to work. The, the catalyst to this conversation was due to the conversations that we would have and have had in the bathroom recently. <laughs> now we bring it up. As a gentleman, <laughs> his name is Vlad. And Vlad, since probably about 2018, and we're now in 2024, has been having individuals on his uh, platform where he wants to speak about me as a piece of shit, I'm a bitch, I'm all kinds of names that he used in reference to me. Now, this is typically the time that I'm supposed to come back with my chest poked out and I'm going to clap back. But I want us to understand that there's a different way in which to approach certain situations because I don't take it personally that he said what it is that he said. See... My daddy has a way of saying, you know what, mama, this ain't personal. Well, when you keep hearing your husband being attacked and you know it's not true. I'm sorry, y'all. It, it's still a little off-putting to me. I'm not going to lie. I know that when people are getting kind of frisky, they might call each other mommy or daddy. But when she says my daddy, it just is a different connotation. I it's more power to you, Monique. This is she's found love and light in this man. But for me, when I hear her say my daddy, I still low key kind of cringe a little bit. 
And you hear people deal with us with their opinions, but they don't deal with us in facts. We deal with people in facts because our opinion doesn't matter. It's the facts that will always stand because facts are facts. Your opinion is just that. And you know what they say about an opinion? It's like an asshole. Everybody has one. So I don't take any, I don't take any of it personal. Anymore. Anymore. Thank you, daddy. Okay. Because you know, that was a time you had to talk me down. Yeah. But what I will say is I take it personal when it keeps attacking our community. That's when it's personal for me. And it's personal for me that this person is allowed to have a platform that oftentimes we're not speaking the best of one another. And we keep signing up for it. So you want to start this now, baby? In, in addition to the, the, the truth, we in our community have to consider stop worrying about who the truth is told about and just accept the truth because we've been taught that based upon who that person is, you don't go against them because of what they can do to you. And what you don't understand, some of us, is that what we don't understand, some of us, is that if you don't stand <laughs> up against them, you don't know what they're going to continue to do to you. You don't know the boundaries of us emboldening them to do whatever they want to do to us. And to me, that starts off with a story about Adam and Eve, mm. but that's a different road that we the got wrong along. road but as it relates to vlad vlad i'm talking directly to you my caucasian brother from another mother uh you've continuously made statements about us trying to extort you for the interview when in actuality the only thing we were looking to do was make sure that you did not own Monique's image in all perpetuity. Now, y'all, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about, so I had to do a quick little deep dive into some of these beefs. Um, <laughs> so this is what they're basically talking about. Um, it says, Vlad, Monique's husband tried to steal our interview. That's why it never aired. So this is in his own words. That's weird. No, I'm, I'm not talking about like blah, blah, blah. Oh, she she yes, right. They were literally holding each other the whole time. I really mentioned this before, but I'll go ahead. Since it's you, my man, I'm going to mention. Ooh. So I interviewed Monique and her husband. Yes. Right. They were literally holding each other the whole time. Like the entire interview was like this. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. No, I'm, I'm not talking about like blah, blah, blah. She oh, calls you daddy, daddy too. No, the, yeah. The whole time they were like yes. this. And it was a really dope interview. We talked about like how she was molested. And we, yeah, yeah. We, we talked, the, you know, we talked shit. about, yeah. you know, the, you know, precious and, and mm -hmm. you know, the issues, you know. Which, which made sense. It was a really, really dope interview. Yeah. And, you know, when, when I have. You know, when we sit down and do interviews, like, you know, with you, you already know, we have people sign release forms. That's right. Right. <laughs> and sometimes people are like, well, I don't want to sign, but, you know, I'll just give you a verbal release. Yeah. You know, yeah. I give you permission, you know, and then, yeah. that's it. We're done. We're cool. But her husband was like, well, we just want to review the, the release form first. And I was like, uh, I don't know. He's like, no, no, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm just going to review it. Cool. Cool. Right. I'm like, all right, fine. So we, we filmed the interview. Yeah. And then I'm like, hey, where's the release form? Oh, my lawyer wants to look at it. Okay, cool. We're waiting like a week. We're waiting two weeks. We got to like three weeks and the lawyer responded. Right. And they sent a modified release form and the release form said that they own the footage and they're going to license it to me for a year. What? And I'm like, wow, you got to be kidding me. What the fuck? They wouldn't. What? Yeah. And I'm like, no, we paid for the, the filming. They you switched? sat down with us. And I'm like, does Breakfast Club own the footage? Do you own Breakfast Club's footage? Right. Do you own Sway in the Morning's footage? Right. Do now, here's the thing. <clears throat> I do think Vlad is a culture vulture. But I've never heard of someone saying, YouTube doesn't even say that. That would be like YouTube saying, um, you, content creator, have done all the work. Not only are we going to take a cut, but after one year, any money you make off that video is now just ours. You can't, like, that would be crazy. So although I, you know, Vlad is not my favorite person, that doesn't sound like an atypical contract that you signed for an interview. You're not telling Barbara Walters and ABC, we're going to let you run this. And then after that, I own it. 
So if I just decide I don't want that interview out anymore, I can take it back. And if I want to profit off of it after you did all the legwork and paid for it, it's mine. And I don't even like Vlad. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay, back to Monique. Interview set up with you that we confirmed on May 7th, 2018, that was scheduled for the 11th of that same week, which is four to five days away, depending upon how you look at it. You did not give us the release form until right before we were about to do the interview with you when we had several days in advance to get that information. I was taught and we were taught that you never sign any documentation until you're able to read that and you have somebody read it over who you trust. You keep portraying it as if when we told you we couldn't sign it right then, you said, well, um, uh, beauty says, I don't blame Mo and her husband. Vlad can find another sucky to swindle. I don't know why she was going to do a Vlad interview, to be honest with you. Vlad a couple years ago is no different than Vlad eight years ago. This is what he does. He definitely does benefit off black beef. But, um, I was surprised they were going to do it in the first place. Oh, we allowed them or I allowed them to still do the interview. If you remember, you had your guy reach out for Monique, not us reaching out to be on your platform. So you were not doing us any favor in reference to allowing the interview to continue. You were trying to work it out for yourself. And when we had our attorney look at it, essentially, when we saw the language that you would own it in all perpetuity, which means once you sell your catalog, it was explained to us and we understood it as there was a possibility that whoever you sold that interview to, along with your others, that you owned in all perpetuity, they could cut it up and use it in any way in which they saw fit, which means we have no control over it. So what standard in the entertainment industry, when you go on different platforms, they give you a licensing agreement and they ask for X amount of time in which to use this. And you either approve it or you don't. In your situation, we would have approved it. However, what happened was once we looked into or initially uh, were looking to give you the licensing agreement and you rejected it because you were like, you, you own it and what you did and we were trying to have control over Monique's image, we had a chance to look at you and the interviews you had done because we didn't know you. We're going to jump into the conversation or the email that you last sent to me on April 2nd of 2022 that is different from how you've been talking about me recently. Mm. Might as well jump into it. You know what, Daddy? Before we jump into it, I just want to explain something to the babies. Do it. When you get to a place called Hollywood, there's no one-on-one. -on -one. There's no, um, let me walk you through it. Let me, let me explain to you what's happening. So that word, in all perpetuity, I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. So I'm sure there were times in my career that I've signed release forms not understanding what I was signing. It's just a release form. Till you understand when you sign that in all perpetuity, that means they, they own you. So I want to make sure you babies understand that's get ready to be new to this business, new to the game. When they put something in front of you and say, sign this, if you did not go to school to read uh, contracts or release forms or whatever, that's not what we do. So put it in the hands of somebody that would know what an all perpetuity means. So let me read this, okay? um y'all so i did take some time off so i gotta get back in the algorithm we only we got like 2200 in the chat but we only have like 500 likes so if we could get to at least like a thousand um likes by the end of the live that would definitely be helpful it just tells youtube that i am making videos that's what the like does in terms of what it does for the content creator it's a free way to support the channel this is from you vlad and we got to talk directly to you because you seem to have a lot to say, but we want to let the community know 
what you sent to us. Sydney, in the spirit of Monique working things out with Lee Daniels, I would like to extend my hand and work things out with you as well. I apologize for what I said about you. I felt frustrated that other YouTube channels that did interviews with her were allowed to show the interview on their YouTube channels, whereas I was only allowed to have it up for a limited time. But regardless of my personal feelings, this was your business decision and I this was your business decision and the way I reacted was unprofessional and immature. I would like to offer her $5,000 for the interview if both of you sign a release form that allows us to keep the interview on our channel like every other channel does. Then he put Sway, Comedy Hype, Breakfast Club, etc. To which she's never signed a release form for them. Never. If that number doesn't work for you, I'm open to negotiating. I still feel that this is a very important interview with an Oscar winner that discusses both her professional and personal life, especially at a time when the Oscars are being discussed. Even if you choose not to accept this, I still take responsibility for my actions and hope that we can get past this and work in the future. Congratulations on your family's continued success. Now, that was the email that Vlad sent to us when he saw Lee Daniels do the public apology. Now, you want to read the response? I will. And just keep in mind, the reason why we're reading this is because the energy that he's giving now has gone back to I'm a piece of shit. I'm this. I'm yeah, who's doing an interview for $5,000? That and all of that. My response to Vlad was, hello, Vlad. First, thank you for the apology. However, if your expression of regret is being made in the spirit of Lee Daniels apologizing to Monique, then remember he did it publicly. That's the same place that you ironically stated the less than flattering things that you did about me. So obviously in being in alignment with what is right, wouldn't the best place to apologize be publicly? As a man, please know I took no offense to your name calling as it didn't make any sense that you would have disdain for me listening to our attorney as you listened to your attorney and I didn't begrudge you. What does hurt my heart, though, is that our community doesn't 50, see thousand. that there are no black people who you constantly some bring ball. white people on their platform to speak negatively about other white people like you do as a white male interviewer with black people. Come on. Your offer of $5,000 means that you missed the point with us, my friend. You see, we are principled individuals that are not moved by money. If spiritually, it doesn't make sense. When Monique says no to a major streaming company's offer of 500K for an hour of work or no to Tyler Perry, who offered Monique money as his way of saying he was sorry for whatever hurt and pain he caused Monique, but she declined in exchange for a public, a a public apology that cost nothing. Now that I don't remember. I don't remember in the conversations that they leaked that Tyler said, I'm just going to go ahead and pay you in lieu of a public apology. Does anybody remember that? Sometimes I think Sydney be putting 20 on 10. It... Then why ever would she slash we say yes to an interview for $5,000 or more with you? My purpose for stating the aforementioned is twofold. One is to say that no amount of money would allow us to do a show with you as long as you are a part of hurting our community by constantly perpetuating beef. The second is as a white man who dips into the black culture, it begs the question, why not use your voice and intelligence for the good of the people and speak truth versus trash, even if it may mean going against the powerful. You're a smart cat. Why not use your brains to be a bridge builder as opposed to being a divider of black men and black women? For the benefit of yourself and your family, please remember the universal law of return. What you put out is what you get back in return. And don't you and yours deserve the best instead of setting yourself up for beef? Mm. To that end, if you're going to apologize, do it the right way, publicly. Not for me, because I forgive you. But for yourself being that you and yours deserve the best karmically. And now you see why they say, I am so difficult to deal with. Because speaking with people directly without being emotional, disrespectful, or argumentative can be challenging to deal with, especially when it's coming from a black man. Come on. All the best to you and yours. Sincerely, Sydney Hicks. 
Now, when y'all hear that, when y'all hear that, and that person has these emails because they went back and forth. When y'all hear that, and then y'all still say, but why? Why talk about it? Let me tell y'all something. And for the babies that's in here right now saying, why? Why? Then get out of here. <laughs> you know why? Because constantly our community gets beat up and beat down. Constantly. And we're okay with that. Monique told y'all get the hell out. Monique says she is done with y'all. Get out. Okay? We're going to follow this road all the way down. You're going to take a sharp left. Okay? Up here, past this tree here. Okay? Once you get up here, you're going to take another sharp turn. And over here, this is where you have me fucked up at. Right here in this place. <laughs> Monique said, get out. Get out. We're okay to stand on the sidelines and say, since it ain't happening to me, I ain't going to say nothing. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. And we're going to keep speaking, and we're going to keep speaking loudly, and we're going to keep speaking up. So hopefully the next ones that come won't have to deal with this BS. Won't have to go through this. Hopefully when that when Vlad hears these emails. That, by the way, he gave no response to. When he hears that, when you hear this, Vlad, maybe the next guest you have on your platform you won't be so readily going after our black community. You won't be so readily, well, what about this? And what about that? And what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? I I agree with Monique. I do think that that Vlad benefits off, you know, beef. I didn't know he was paying people $50,000. Is that why Boosie is on every other week? What I will say is, you agreed to the interview before actually vetting him out. That's typically what management would do, Monique. So why didn't Sydney vet who he agreed to allow you to interview with? I got to call it, you know, I'm a straight shooter, pow, pow. I got to call it like I see it. This is your manager. By your own admission, you said that you weren't really familiar with what he'd done and his body of work. So why would your manager allow you to sit on that platform and conduct the interview. And to our people, how many times have we seen white people on Vlad? And I'm not saying there's never been any, I'm not saying that, but how many times have we seen white people on Vlad and Vlad is going against and asking what they think about other white people? Why do we- Somebody said Boosie don't need the money, but he sure is on Vlad a lot. And somebody said that Vlad was paying 50, 50 racks. I didn't say Boosty was broke, but he be on Vlad a lot. And we do know that Vlad pays people. Keep taking the bait. Or how many times have we seen Black people bringing white people on that platform to consistently go against one another? It doesn't happen. So when our brother Damon Dash speaks about culture vultures, Come in on. our opinion, this is the epitome of that vulture to our culture. And to my baby, Michael Blackston, oh, I want to say to you, brother, thanks for not taking the bait because I, we saw him trying to bait you in. And what you said was, which made us look at each other, when you said, so why'd you give me the release form to sign right now as I sat down? Right. So you caught it. You caught that in that moment as he was trying to speak ill of your brother and sister. Nothing but love and respect to you, brother Michael Blackston. In addition to, there's a black man named Godfrey out there. Come on, daddy. We called him up because, you know, that's how we do. We call people up together. The same thing you see right here in front of you is what we do behind <laughs> closed doors. And we called him up because of the interview that he did with Vlad. Mm -hmm. And this brother epitomized what manhood is about. Hold on. We got a couple of super chats. Um, Lakina, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Booty Butter says, I feel like daddy and Monique breath smell like hamster bunions. With all this low heavy talking. <laughs> thank you, Booty Butter. <laughs> uh, hey, Mrs. Parker says, who made Monique and Sydney the coaches of morality? They... Thank you, Ms. Barker. <laughs> uh, Sassy Girl says, the old daughter had said they had re re rectified the situation and then Mo brought it back up. So I guess it kind of like ripped the Band-Aid open and reopened the wound. I didn't know that. Thank you, Sassy Girl. Um, Just Me said, Mommy and Daddy are both annoying. 
Thank you for the super chat. Ali says, Monique and Daddy need to stop coming to, to work to working class people with their rich people problems. Complaining about 500K for an hour of work, they're tone deaf. Now, I have heard before that they're tone deaf, so you're not the first I'm hearing of it. One's been able to point specifically to the bridge that she's burned other than what she did here with Vlad and it's saying no. And for a black woman and black women out there, they, they gaslight you all the time. They want to constantly tell you how unimportant you are. Meanwhile, they need you. Mm. They need you. Mm. So don't give in. Don't be gaslit. Because for Monique to be so irrelevant and unimportant, this man has been talking about that interview for six years because of how relevant she actually is. And I'm going to tell y'all something, too. Mm. And it just took me there. You know why I'm going to keep fighting? And you know why I'm going to keep talking? I read Hattie McDaniel's story. I read her the kid's story. I read her the water story. I made it my business to read those stories. And all of them got the same story. And if you don't believe me, go read it for yourself. They all got done dirty. They all got pushed away. They all was told they wasn't shit. They was all told they need to apologize and do this and do that and do this. And those women left here by themselves. They left here with no money. And they left here knowing that they was fighting for a community that told them to kiss their ass. So for those of you who keep saying, Monique, why are you talking? Because damn it, the little girl that comes behind me, hopefully the story gets different. Maybe 100 years from now, somebody might want to say something about Monique. I hope that little girl knows, God damn it, don't give up. Don't, don't let people talk shit on you. Don't be unafraid to keep standing. Be unafraid to keep standing. I'm so sick of reading them stories, and all of them left here. They left here. Nell Carter. All of them left here. Shirley Hemphill, all of them left feeling like they wasn't enough, mistreated, mishandled. And if they do that to a woman who has won the awards, who is the first black female comedian. To now, Hattie McDaniels did pass away in 52 and her net worth was only $10,000. So I don't know what that would equate to in present day, but she was an Oscar winner. To have a sitcom to go into syndication in the last five years. Pardon me. To do what it is that she's done. What are they going to do to you at your job when nobody knows your name? Nobody knows your plight. People are afraid to stand up because you're just a black woman. That's all. And black men, we got to understand this. Let us stop demeaning and going against our black women and then ponder why we get mistreated. What are we going to get treated like if we condemn and put down the very woman, the black woman that birthed us into existence? And for the black women, let me be clear, because I see some of your comments. Yeah, damn, you can see that? Baby daddy, because it's right there. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Now, this is where she read y'all. <laughs> this is where she read y'all. I did just read up, though, um, that Nell Carter also died broke. And it said it was due to her poor management of funds played a crucial role in her diminishing wealth over time. It is known that ongoing health issues worsen this financial struggle, particular, particularly her battle with diabetes. So it says that her money management was the problem, not that people took advantage of her. Okay. When I see your comments and y'all are saying, why is he speaking? That tells me a lot. That tells me either, number one, you don't have a man at all, or number two, you don't trust that man that you have. So if y'all want to know why he keeps speaking, because he's supposed to. That's what kings do. So for the ones that got anything to say about it, you've never experienced a king. Because when a king is talking, I don't need to talk. He's speaking on what needs to be spoken on. So for you empowered, independent boss, sisters, your guitar are going to be lonely even when a man land next to you if you don't know how to treat him. And you've set no, no standards for yourself. 
That's why y'all have a problem with mine sitting next to me. I'm thankful that he's sitting next to me. I'm thankful that he says, you know what, mama? As long as I'm here, you ain't got to fight. Monique said, all you lonely, non-having-ass men and women out there. <laughs> I said what I said, okay? As <laughs> long as I'm here, you ain't got to. So for you black men out there, some of you, I'm ashamed of you. I'm embarrassed for you. Because when you put your mouth on a black woman and you start speaking ill of a black woman that you don't even know what you're talking about, I feel bad for the woman in your life. And I think that's a perfect segue, Mama, mm -hmm. into our brother D.L. Hughley, who I thought we <laughs> extended an olive branch uh, the last time we had commentary. Not a perfect segue to D.L. Hughley. In reference to when his daughter spoke out, the reason why we stopped and still offered to have a conversation with him. No, this is the perfect segue to D.L. Hughley. How do you suck the dick of a coward? to resolve the, the situation was not out of fear of his daughter doing something. It was out of love for you, DL, because it would be no different than the street we came up on. You might get in a fight with little Tony down the road, but you see Tony's mama coming down the street with them bags. You better go get them bags. I'm not tripping off of what happened between me and Tony. That's his mama. That's your daughter. So we weren't going after you anymore. We were, we weren't even going to bring you up, but you went on, was it Jason Lee? Yes. You went on Jason Lee's show and you wanted to share what? That I am the cause of the riff between you and your daughter. D.L. Hughley, because you're too afraid to sit down with us, as we've said repeatedly, hey brother, let's have a conversation and let's do it publicly because our community can really heal on how we can resolve this. But you keep running and then you keep running your mouth. And after we spoke on you last, someone was like, okay, cool. But when I watched you sit there with Jason Lee and you said, Monique is the reason I have a riff with my daughter. You're the reason you have a riff with your daughter, DL. Stop trying to run away from the fact that you did not protect your baby. And let me be clear with you about something. I'm, the, I'm fighting for your daughter because I was that daughter too that had a daddy that did not protect me when I told him I was molested. So I know what that baby's sitting in and I know what she's dealing with. And though she's a grown woman, I know the trauma that that brings. And this ain't no shit that I brought to the table. You did in what you posted. What now in fairness to Monique, I could definitely see how that story could trigger her. If you are a victim of that type of abuse and then you're hearing in present day, somebody else going through it. I could see how that could trigger Monique. <laughs> What you posted, I'm getting so sick of you not taking accountability or responsibility for your words, brother. Never would I try to hurt your family, your wife, your daughter. That's not even in me. Because she never said anything about them. She only spoke about you. I spoke about you, but it shows, too, the lack of manhood that you have to try to put it off on your wife and your daughter. That's the lack of man. And then I'm getting sick of you making these comments about who's daddy's daddy. And, 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 and as if I'm with a gay man, I'm tired of that DL because here's the one question I would ask you, brother. When you say who's daddy's daddy, who the hell is the friend? What kind of relationship did you and this man have that you would not protect your daughter? Maybe that's why your daughter's having a problem with you because the reality is setting in that you loved a man and you don't want to inconvenience your relationship with this man. So when you get- Was it a man? He's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're right, daddy. He said his friend. So we don't know. We don't. And Dio, see, you keep playing. Who's the friend? <laughs> she insinuated that the man was gay. So <laughs> Cause you love the man more than you love your your daughter. That's what she said. Now she then went full spec. How do you suck the dick of a coward? Now is who we don't know who took advantage of the daughter. Although I did, I, I, I don't know why I thought it was a male. I don't know why in the back and forth, I thought he said it was a man. I don't know. I could be wrong. Y'all could put in the comments. Um, 
if it was a man or if you guys ever heard him say it was a man or a woman who took advantage of his daughter. Say the name to make sure that friend doesn't do it to anybody else. Who's the friend? Or are you still so in love with this friend that you're going to protect the friend? See, I don't mess with nobody, y'all. That's not how I'm built. But when you keep putting your mouth on me and you keep running your mouth, I'm not the one that's going to back down, D.L. Hughley. In addition, you won't. if you notice, Monique has not ever spoken in reference to anybody's business. When they asked her about Will and Jada on Tigger, what did she say? That ain't my business. When Kevin Hart back in the day was having his challenges, she said, that's my baby and I hope for the best for his wife and himself. That's none of my business. Um, let me see. Jay Mayo says it was the son of a friend. So why would he have so much respect for a kid that he would not believe his daughter over a, a kid his daughter's age? Hmm. Oh, Lord. Uh, Rodney says, neither Mo or Dia are receiving a parent of the year. <laughs> neither Mo or DL are receiving a parent of the year award. How and ever she's low-key reading DL with the truth. Thank you, Rodney. <laughs> Hold on. We got some more super chats. Uh, where did we stop? Scratching. Mama, thank you so much. You be playing them scratch off? So do I. Uh, Butterf Butterfly Mama says, Mims, I can get you back in the algorithm. I need help with something big, big. Oh, let me know. Just DM me on, on Instagram. Make it make sense now. Carol Chamberlain, thanks for being a member for 13 months. She said, Pimp Daddy talking so smooth and his woman is eating it up. Y'all are shading the hell out of Sydney. <laughs> um, Aliyah's Tata said, happy Wednesday, Mims and chat. Y'all, please hit the like button. Over 2,000 people in here, and you're appreciated. Thank you. I appreciate you. Bad Biscuit said, I believe Mo. Vlad uses our community. F him. I'm with you. Sarah Morgan, thanks for the super sticker. Lemon Pepper, ill. What, what were you talking about, ill, too? <laughs> Tanika Washington says, keep being you, Mims. Thank you, Tanika. Um, hey, Mrs. Parker said, Monique's want, Monique wants to go down in history so bad as a trailblazer, and she's going about it wrong and really going out bad. You are not the first person that I have heard make those sentiments about Monique in terms of her, you know, always responding. I do think that people should be able to respond, but I think that probably a crisis management team would tell her don't respond to everything because then it puts people in a space where maybe they don't care anymore or they sometimes feel like you were the person that cried wolf. But I think as long as Monique and Sydney or a united front, anybody and everybody who says something about Monique or they feel has wrong Monique is going to get one of these sit downs. Um, winning and unbothered said, I'm so tired of Monique and daddy, but I love your take on it, Mims. Also, YouTube is unsubscribing. I had to resubscribe, resubscribe twice in the last month. I have been hearing that, y'all. Uh, I don't know what it is, but um, definitely please check to see if you are still subscribed. I've gotten a lot of emails about it. I meant to talk about it sooner. Thank you. I really do appreciate that, winning and unbothered. And everybody who reached out to let me know that they are being unsubscribed. Maybe YouTube is punishing me. Um, just me, 8031 says, but she's paying for her man. Damn. That was not expected. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, Sarah says, new member, mad respect, ma'am. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, we got some more super chats, but let's get back. I'll definitely read them before the end. She only speaks about her truth. And when you got upset because she reposted what you posted, in reference to you not protecting your daughter, consider re-looking at that interview that you had, I believe it was with Sway. Yes, sir. Look at the disconnect. Look at the lack of remorse that you seem to have had when you did that. In addition to that, think about the years that have gone by where you've made your living off of talking about people, from pastors wanting to put up a million dollars to box you, to fight you, but you from the whoop ass tribe. What pastor was trying to fight him? Y'all, what pastor was trying to fight D.L. Hewley? Was it T.D. Jakes? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. What, was it Whitehead? Let me know who was trying to box him. But you went deathly silent to Angela Stanton, 
approaching an airport, as I understand it, you wanted to get security from the black. Everybody don't like Angela Stanton. Everybody don't like her. Maybe maybe he didn't want her approaching her. I know some people do like her. Um, she's really big on like prison reform and stuff like that, but she's definitely a polarizing figure. Black women who were ridiculed on Don Imus, uh, by Don Imus and called them nappy head and ugly. Nappy head hoes. Nappy head hoes. And you went on Jay Leno and you said, well, I'm not saying they hoes, but their hair was sure nappy. Brother, you have a history of not protecting the black woman. Come on. And now it is embarrassing to you that she highlighted what you did in conjunction with the original problem being that you, she was on your platform, came to you after the young lady Jasmine played the game of would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom on or Corinne Stephens with a condom off? And then she comes to you. And this that really, she's mad about that, y'all. Look her face. Now I will say this on another note: Monique's skincare routine is popping. Look at her face compared to Sydney. Um, I think my the lady who does like my face or my skin stuff, I think Monique has what's called the glass look. Monique's Monique's skin is popping, y'all. That was just a little side note. She mad, but her skin is popping. Says brother DL, what what we doing? And you say, that's just the way we do it. The problem is you can't be Malcolm X one day and then David Duke the next day. You can't be Mega Evers one day and then you Strom Thurmond the next day. Either you're going to be for your community or you're not. So the truth, accountability, and trauma, and the reason why there's a level of ease, and I'll never say a bad word about you. I'm only sticking to the facts. The reason why people constantly talk about other people because oftentimes there is an unaddressed trauma that you've experienced DL which may explain why you sitting on a man's platform in a clear daylight with dark shades on maybe but at the end of the day you've had a history of not protecting the black woman brother and that's what she's addressing so when she said essentially I feel sorry for your daughter I feel sorry for your mother his I mom. mean, your wife, do you not understand why? And there are other items that happened that took place. But how do you suck the dick of a coward? Speak? <laughs> wife, as I understand it, finding out about a child that you had and that was lost. And once she found out about it, that child no longer existed. Now, some will say, oh, that's slow. That's the problem with our community. Come on. See, when people address you with the real, no, you got to come back and have a real conversation. This is not designed to be provocative. We're going to talk factually. We're going to talk reasonably. When you gave the community a bad bill of goods, when Monique produced a contract and you produced a memorandum of understanding, uh rodney says baby she told y'all she don't give a f she don't sorry baby she just told y'all if you don't have a man shut the f up <laughs> it is ridiculous it's, it's just completely ridiculous <laughs> uh thank you rodney just me said but monique is paying for her man though I... <sighs> don't don't come after me monique Let's see what he's talking about. He knows me, that knows me, knows I'm a solid cat. Do you not understand the contradiction there? Horrible things in your life. Horrible. Not I may have made some mistakes in my life. I've done some horrible things in my life. This is what you said. But everybody that knows me knows I'm a solid cat. That is an oxymoron and the highest of order, good sir. So that is what true. happens is... Our community is so used to hearing and not listening that they're not paying attention to what it is that you're saying. Go ahead, Mama. I'm sorry, Daddy. The, oh, I don't. Oh. Autumn says, Monique, once you get a man that's not on your payroll, then we can talk about mine. Damn. 
y'all are really going in on Monique. <laughs> okay, thank you, Autumn. I'm looking through these comments. Y'all are y'all are not giving her any kind of slack. Um, Sharif, thank you so much for becoming a member. I appreciate you. Candace Gatson says, How's she gonna speak on somebody else's parent though? Let's not forget how she left her own son to the wolves. Whew. Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you, is it a coincidence? <laughs> Uh, okay, we did that one. Uh, Akusa says, men often put their friends above women and girls. That's horrible. Thank you for the super chat, Akusa. Booty Butter says, I have a strong feeling daddy is the bottom. Oh, my gosh. You're the bottom. You're the bottom. That's why you're, you're the over there. <laughs> why? You're, you're the bottom. bottom. You're the bottom. That's why you're, you're the over there. The <laughs> Thank you, Booty Butter. <laughs> Oh, my God. Monique is going to get me. I'm going to say it was all you. Uh, Rodney the Voice, thanks again for the super chat. He says, Monique and DL both are re-traumatizing re his daughter. He continues to speak about his daughter in interviews as if he's not doing the exact same thing Monique is doing, but he's her father. That is a great point, Rodney, because if Monique reopened a wound that he and his daughter had gone to counseling for, and now you are going and consistently talking about Monique doing it, then you are, by definition, doing the same thing that Monique is doing. That's a really good point, Rodney. Um, Candace Gadden said, Monique has came for black women before in the bonnets. <laughs> Monique then, hey, my sweet babies. I might be mad at Tyler Purr, but uh, I don't like y'all wearing them bonnets in the airport. I love y'all for real. It went something like that. <laughs> uh, Shamise Pretlow says, I hate when he talks, then drags it out for infinity. Like, shut the F up. And don't get caught up by the negatives. We This conversation is for the positive. This conversation is for those that hear it. And for those that hear it, be unapologetic when you know you're standing in the truth. For those that hear it, be unapologetic that you are not backing down. Be unwavering, unflinching. Because if we continue to be that, it may stop the bully. It may stop the person that believes they're so powerful, I can do and say anything to you. So for the ones that can hear us, that's listening, be unafraid, baby. Because we get one ride that we know of. Just one. That we know of, we get In one ride. In this form. In this form. I be damned. If I'm going to let somebody take my turn, this is my turn. And I'm going to take my turn the way I see fit. Take yours, baby. Right. Take your turn. And 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 I want to keep speaking to our black men. Because sometimes you can see our black men speaking so ill of a black woman. And you'd be like, brother, how you feel about your mama, your aunties, your sister? And you're just speaking so freely about something that oftentimes you have no idea what you're talking about. And I want to go there because when I, let me just say this real quick. When I did Club Shay Shay, you know what I appreciate about Shannon Sharp? And you have people say, he's not a real journalist. He's not. What he is is a true brother. What he is is a brother that says, I'm going to let you tell your story. I'm going to let you tell your story. That's what Shannon Sharp is. And that's why Shannon Sharp, Club Shay Shay, is so successful because that brother talks to you with no judgment. That brother ain't trying to put nobody against nobody. He's simply letting you tell your story. And I think some people may have a problem with our, our brother, Club Shay Shay. They, they may. And brother Stephen A. Smith, mm. this is directed to you. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, how did <laughs> when you come out and you. Stephen A. Smith is somewhere be like, well, God damn. That's so, that's 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 and you could have did it. See how I get it wrong? You never apologize. You say that Monique seems like it's bitter. Your life seems to be dim down. And uh, I just don't understand. Here you go, brother. I'm going to repeat what I said to you before. Why was it okay for you to call Jason Whitlock fat bastards and other names and Monique never referred to anyone out of their name baby I'm only she judging said, what you give me brothers 
but she told her truth. Why is it okay for you to tell your truth that's inclusive of name calling, but a black woman can't tell her truth? And you being the journalist that you are, and you came on and you said, I don't know what's true and what's not. If you were the journalist that you propose yourself to be, would you not have come on after being knowledgeable about what took place before you spoke about it? That's what journalists do. They speak about what they know. They don't hypothesize. They want to speak from a factual place. At the very least, sources say type of situation. But you didn't do any of that. And now that this time has elapsed, did you notice that people haven't come out that she spoke about to dispute anything that she said? What reason would she have to lie on Kevin Hart? Love him. Told the truth about what took place. That brother loaned us or gave us 300 grand. Yes, he did. He gave us 300 grand. We love him. There's an old saying, you can feed him. He gave it to us, but we gave it back. However, we did hear you basically reprimand him for not having your back. He told you he would all, he told you that he would assist you with some production. You went to a production company saying we have Kevin Hart who's going to back us. I feel like this. If this man gave you $300,000 without the knowledge that it would come back, then I probably just personally would not have mentioned that story just because you are a person who helped me out when I needed it. You know, if you are asking somebody for $300,000 to a multimillionaire, $300,000 is still a lot of money. So you told that story. I don't know how it is absolutely relevant. They wrapped in Kevin Hart with Tyler Perry, but he was a friend enough to you to give you $300,000 without ever knowing if you could pay it back. Now, Kevin Hart is, you know, he has his own stuff. But in that situation, just as it applies to Monique specifically, if somebody could do something like that for you, then why call them out as well would be my question. Not only did we give it back. With interest. We gave it back to him with interest. Even though he gave it to us, we were like, listen, brother, there is going to be someone who asks. We do not want you to be in a situation where you have less because of us. In fact, we want to make sure you have more because of what you did and how we appreciate that. We weren't embarrassed by that. This is what happens when you get lied about in this industry by a man named Tyler Perry who says you're difficult and then things would seem to dry up. Again, we got to stop being embarrassed about what really took place. So when Stephen A. Smith, <laughs> have you heard the audio yet of Tyler Perry yet? <laughs> have you asked your friend, uh, uh, Kevin Hart, who, again, this brother is blowing up. We want him to win the whole nine. But when you constantly hear an individual speaking about that they are a brand, the only thing is, what good is it to be a brand if you lose your man and you let an individual who happens to be white just happens to be? Um, which lawsuit are you talking about? Are you talking about the lawsuit that where he sued um, Tasha K? I can check that out. I um I've been doing some, even though I took a little time off, I've been doing some Diddy research on his latest lawsuit. That video will come tomorrow, but I'll go ahead and look to see if there's anything new going on with Kevin Hart suing Tasha K. Thanks for the reminder, brown, brown, brown eyed girl. Be white and your manager get in the way of an arrangement that you set up with an individual you call your auntie. You tell them they like your mother, but then they don't get back to you in reference to it. So we're wrong and she's wrong for having a discussion about the truth. The I mean, truth. The truth. I mean, mom recently there was an outreach for her to do an interview with him. And she said, I'm not doing an interview with him through you. You, I'm coming to you, Kevin, and I'm speaking to you, Kevin, and reached out to Kevin and said, hey, brother, through text, why is it that you would have somebody reach out to me for an interview when all you got to do is reach out? <coughs> Sometimes you can be so big 
that you don't even know what's going on in your own affairs. And he said, no one from my team reached out for, to you. Well, guess what? They did. And we gave them the name and the individual and I called her back to confirm she was who she really was. And that's who she was. So again, what we And then say? once we gave them that information, we no longer heard back from them. So here's what I'm saying to you for the babies that's listening. They want to come into this business. When you get into this business, don't lose yourself. Don't. Don't lose yourself, baby. Don't have people that knew you for a long time. When you come around again, they have no idea who you are. Don't lose yourself. I'm not saying don't change because change can be good. Change can be good when you're learning new things and different things. And you might say, you know what? I want to be a better person. Am I the only one who be reading these comments? Why are they going in on Monique? Uh, Black Love Bug said, your daddy gay. So then somebody laughed. Another person said, this is sad. And if he is, um, it said, really accepting people as they are and showing love and respect to all people is trailer park garbage. That says a lot about your level of humanity or lack thereof. Um, so Monique underscore Dean Rose was in the comments while this was live. And Monique is in the comments. I don't know if she knows Monique personally, but she definitely was going up for bat, up to bat for daddy she said the emphasis on auntie's truth accountability and trauma um black love bug said i'm gay too but he's a married he's married to a woman if you're gonna be about that life be about it i have issues with men when this when this d when they are dl and want to be called daddy when he should really be called fanny what is going <laughs> daddy aka fanny got her attention seeking y'all Monique is probably going to go off again when she reads these comments. Monique is probably going to go off again when she reads these comments. Not saying it at all. What we're saying is don't lose yourself. And we know people. We do not know if Sydney is gay. And now everything becomes so grand and so, You've never heard know, so out there. And you're like, what you talking about? What happened to us just sitting on hands and french fries and some chicken wings and having real conversation? So for you babies that want to get into this business, it's a business to get into. Don't lose you. And don't let nobody convince you of what you know to be wrong, but you want to act like it's right. If it's a duck, if it look like a duck and quack like a duck, some people in Hollywood would say, yeah, that's really a rabbit. And you know damn well it's a duck. Don't you change your mind and say it's a rabbit too. And that's in any industry that you are in. Don't change who you are because if you do, you won't get the opportunity to run into true folk like Cat Williams, mm. true folk like Mark Curry, true folk that? like Tommy Davidson, true folk like Zoo Man, Come on. true folk like Red Grant mm. and the others on that Dark Matter tour. And when you walk out, see, this is the- Now I do think that this live was partly to promote the tour, to be honest with y'all. Um, Carol Chamberlain says, and you're still doing horrible things, sir. <laughs> Y'all do not like Sydney. Booty Butter says, that's not glass makeup. That's Kelly Jelly from Daddy. Oh, my God. I have to start reading your, specifically your comments uh, first before I read them out loud. That's not glass makeup. That's KY from Daddy sitting on Monique. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm not reading the rest of that, Booty Butter. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> Just Me says DL is a comedian. At what point did he ever say he was an activist? I don't know why. I, I, I don't know why I qualify DL as comedian slash activist. I can't remember him saying it specifically, but I thought that he kind of leaned towards political activism. I could be wrong, though. Akusa says Mo is completely male identified, be clear, but she makes points just the same. Broken clock and DL is a lowdown misogynist with no credibility. Dang, let them know how you really feel, Kusa. Crystal, thank you so much for the super sticker. And just me, 8031 says, Mo may not be difficult, but daddy is. I'm having difficulties listening to anything he says. And he kind of speaks kind of slow, like he's parsing all of his words. And sometimes I think, just me, I know she's not going to do it, but. If she has the issue with somebody, I Mo, Monique is like very quick-witted, intelligent. 
I don't think that she always needs somebody to speak for her. I know she prefers this because he's her manager, but my preference would be to hear her. Like, I like the Club Shay Shay interview because that was Monique speaking, less Sydney. Part for me that I love seeing through video because I got to hold it down at the crib, but seeing it through the video that this man, Cat Williams, commands 10,000, 12,000, 14,000 people. And she walks out and they stand up. So you might not be loved in Hollywood. Did y'all get that? I didn't quite get that. I, I didn't get it. I, I didn't get it. it would, but there's something about being loved by your people. Come on, daddy. I, I want to say this about our brother, Cat Williams. Through the years, I would always hear things. Okay, he don't show up to shows. He ain't this, he ain't that, he ain't this. That's one of the purest cats in this game. That cat right there named Cat Williams. See, I know stories about this brother. And I said to Cat, do you mind if I share this? And he said, Monique, I can't stop you from saying what you want to say. See, for the ones that talk ill about Cat Williams and all he's not doing, they can't touch him. Because there was a woman named Yvette Wilson who played Endell on the Parkers. Rest in peace. And when Andel took ill, it was a man named Cat Williams that stepped in and took care of that sister till she left this earth. But they won't tell you all that story about him. They won't tell you the story that when I walk into that production, their brother takes care of his folks. Uh, Andel. May she rest in peace. I had no idea that Cat Williams um, helped her at the end of her life. I, I won't even say that. I was about to say, well, what did you do for her, Monique? Like, was it like a combined force? Like, did was she, when they say she he took care of Andale, was it like, was she having money problems? Did her health issues cause her to be unable to like pay bills? Was there like a combined effort to kind of care for her? I don't, I don't really know how to receive that. Maybe Monique just did not want to speak about what she did for her. Um, it says yes, he assisted her with the treatments. Um, Miss Curiosity said we can't verify that story. Actors don't have good medicals. Okay, so y'all are kind of with me. I didn't quite know where that was going. That's beautiful that he did that. Did he have a relationship with her or did he just know her as an actress who was going through some serious me medical stuff? And when you hear the DJ, DJ say, Monique, I've been with Kat for six years. And this person say, I've been with Kat for this many years. And that means loyalty. That means somebody treating you right. So mm. don't believe everything you okay. can't see. So um, Poppy says, Mo was broke around Yvette's passing, this time due to the precious stuff. Okay, so Monique really wasn't able to assist in that way, and Kat stepped in. Okay, good to know. See for yourself. And what I see when I go into that dark matter tour, every weekend I see people that love that five-foot-five giant. They love that man. So sometimes when Hollywood say, you ain't enough, you ain't good, when the people, when your people say you enough, that's all you need, my babies. Now, that is dope. Uh, Satra says, no, ma'am, Cat did it alone. He paid her medical bills. He took her home and took care of her as a friend. No relationship. That is really dope. He helped, um, was the Migos. Somebody came out and talked about it a lot. Um, he used to date the girl with the nose. Um, Hazel Lee. He used to date Hazel Lee, and Hazel Lee came out and talked about a lot of the people that Cat Williams helped behind the scenes. But it's good to know that, you know, Monique really wasn't capable of it, and that's why she's not talking to Okay. Thanks, Satra. And the 
to piggyback on what you're saying, Mama. Let me tell you how Brother Cat is a, such a gangster mm. in the best of ways. When we worked out the deal for Monique to go on the Dark Matter tour, he didn't send me to his people. Mm. He said, man, let's me and you work this out. And when I tell you in about five minutes, what was conveyed and done normally takes, you know, a bit longer than that. And the reverence and the flowers that he has bestowed on Monique, just a gentleman. Just a gentleman. A gentleman. And everybody on that tour had the same energy. Everybody cheering everybody on. Everybody's happy for everybody. So this weekend in Dallas, Texas, and in New Orleans. Come on now. <laughs> Y'all come on out, baby. Get some of this good good. Because that's all it is. It's good good. And for the babies that's coming in this business, get around people that's pure. Get around people that's not pure. Not Tyler It's pure. That's the people you want to mess with. The people you want to be around is the people that's going to tell you the truth. Pure. Even if it don't feel good to you. But they're going to tell you the truth. You need to be people. So for you babies, I want to go to Hollywood. I understand it because I was like that too. But let this stay pure. And you need them pure people. Hollywood is just a, a, a macrocosm, <laughs> a microcosm of the world we live in. I would love Nothing to go to the tour. It's more special in Hollywood than what's happening in your life. I love Cat and Monique. The world knows about it in a way that you might not know about it if you work at Bragger Gutman's. Mm -hmm, Daddy, don't nobody know about Bragger Gutman's. Hey, the people in Baltimore know it on my industry. <laughs> Bragger Gutman's, baby. Oh. So it they, th the bottom line is don't lose yourself no matter where you are. And we're not only going to address who doesn't act right, but those that do. So we got to highlight both sides. And we want to end, if you will, with the last cat. His name is Gary Owens. OK, mm -hmm. Gary Owens is an individual who Monique has never said anything about an unkind word or anything, but he has felt the need to jump in and speak in reference to Monique. And what's funny is oftentimes you're having comedians who are speaking ill about Monique who haven't accomplished what Monique has accomplished, but because it's a black woman and it's so easily to, easy to demean them it, because of the lack of relevance our society will have for them, they get away with it. You would never hear a, a center uh, trying to demean Shaq and what he did in the game of basketball that hasn't accomplished what Shaq has accomplished. They, they, they would be crazy. But a black woman is completely different. So when I hear, we hear, uh, brother Gary Owens speaking in reference to uh, Monique and Sydney. They always talking about, we love you. We love you. Then they'll say something that nobody knew that's hard. Like, but, but we knew when y'all had an abortion. What? What? And this is where people say, oh, Monique, Gary Owens, let me tell you something. If you spent the same energy that is weird. The same energy with your black wife, you may not have room to speak about nobody else. But when your wife came out or ex-wife came out and said, you mistreated her and those kids, you know why you were so easily able to get away with it? Because she's a black woman. Gee, I wanted the opportunity to say that. But I'm sorry. No, no, that's all right, mother. I'm sorry. But, um, now that, we got a lot to unpack there. Why was he talking about Monique potentially terminating a pregnancy? One. Two, why does Monique have to apologize to daddy for saying how she felt about a man who spoke about her? I don't know what's weirder in that situation. At the end of the day, do you think the time that you've used to focus on Monique telling her truth, like about Will Packer, did you go investigate and did you notice the trailers that blew up? I don't hear you speaking about that. Did you listen to the, uh, I feel like Ozzy uh, uh, Davis when he said, did you know Brother Malcolm? 
It's like, did you listen to the audio of Tyler Perry? I didn't hear. Sydney, you said that already. More Monique. Now, again, this is my humble opinion. Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, and Lee Daniels. My beautiful black queens, my sweet babies. Over a lie and a rumor, all I want, Shannon, is an apology from my black brother. I want you to look in your camera, and I want you to talk to Tyler Perry. Not only did he apologize on stage, that man apologized to our children. And then it became an issue with Tyler Perry and Lady O. Lee Daniels already apologized. But did you hear what the man said? I violated you. And we saw our beautiful black queen Taraji express that. But it was the messenger. He said, Mo, let's do great things. And I said, my brother, do you know, Shannon, that's caused my family tens, quadrillions, billions, billions of dollars? If it looked like a duck, quack like a duck, what is it, Shannon? It's a duck. He's the only one I had to deal with. He said, you're like my mother, my sister, my aunt. Baby, I love us for real. Now, again, this is just my humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, if that ain't worth a like, I don't know what it is. Are you speaking about that? I just keep hearing you, Deneen, uh, and, and want to speak ill of Monique. And, and again, to piggyback on what my mama said, uh, do you think it would be more beneficial or would have been more beneficial to you to use that energy <laughs> to not focus on my Black woman and focus on the black woman you used to have that was your entryway into this community that gave you the guest pass and now with the guest pass it's as if you feel like you're at home so much that you're starting to wear out your welcome kicking up your feet when you're just a guest you're a guest in our business because at the end of the day what you don't know is even with will packer Nothing but love because there was a white man on the set that referred to uh, David Talbot and Will Packer as boys. And she pulled them up. And this is after they had the conversation uh, in reference to how he was handling himself. Because we from the old school, we can have a conversation. We can have a disagreement. We can have a fight. And then afterwards. Was that a threat? We gonna say, hey, you want to get a sandwich? We good. You want a sandwich? Cause this is what people do. Like we don't want to see nothing happen ill to, to Will Packer. What we want to do is see good stuff happen. Like you open up your heart and you don't work for the individual that's gonna take advantage of your people. Tyler Perry, we want the best for you because. In wanting the best for you, you would have had the courage to say to Lionsgate, I can't in good conscience go to this black woman and ask her to do something for this white company for free when she has no contractual obligation to do anything for her. I'm going to need a budget that I need to go in with her because you are writing checks out for people to get a new house, which is beautiful. You write checks out to a waitress for $3,000, you let people use your private jet and all of these things get out. But why is it the thing that was done in the dark has you trying to take advantage of a black woman? Why? And you know what makes it so easy for Gary Owens, for Vlad, to speak ill of a black woman? Because they watch some of our black men do it, Stephen A. Smith. They watch some of our black men do it, D.L. Hughley. They watch they watch our black men show a black woman no regard. So that's why it's so easy for them to speak so ill of us in front of us. And we say, mm, you should, yep. Yeah, yeah. So when y'all talk about the ancestors, what would the ancestors say? What would they say, Stephen A. Smith? What would they say, DL? What would they say about your behavior. And ask your mother, Stephen A. Smith, mm. ask your sister, Stephen A. Smith, have they ever 
Your black mom, your black sister, have they ever been in a situation where it was as if they were to be seen and not heard? Mm -hmm. Ask them. Because if you start understanding that, then you will understand to start believing the very individuals that brought you into existence. So the reason why, again, when we hear people say, why is he here? That's like saying, why did that man open the door for you? Uh, right. That why is he opening your door for you? Glad We've got to black learn, woman which is funny because when we got together. I didn't know that. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <coughs> when we got together, I had to say, do me a favor. Don't disrespect me. Allow me to treat you like a gentleman. Like a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be a gentleman towards you. Yes. Let me be a gentleman towards you, though sometimes you can be a gentleman. Okay. And, but you know, <laughs> and I want to say this, you know, we're supposed to be going, but I want to say this too for some of you sisters that question it. My mother, I can remember my mother saying to me, Monique, you've given Sydney all the power. And I said, Ma, what you see me giving Sydney is respect. Something you never gave my father. And what your grandmama said? Well, Mimi? Yeah. Well, my grandmother, who was my Mimi that I spoke about in the special. My grandmother, well, I want to give him the whole story. So like, okay. Well, my, so we were going out to get ice cream one night, right? And Mimi couldn't get up into the car. So Sydney had to tell her, grab me around my neck and let me put you up in the car. So when we got back home, she said to me, Nikki, you got to go. She said, and I didn't had a minute, I didn't had men. She said, but you got a good one, baby. When my grandmother that's 83 years old tells me I got a good one, who do you think I'ma listen to? Who do you think I'ma listen to? So I understand the one who said that what you wanted her, the one who said what you wanted to hear. The sisters out there that don't get it, because my mother didn't get it, but my mother and father did not have a happy marriage. And they stayed married for, what, 50 years? Till both of them left this earth? But they were both in prison to each other because they despised one another. So for those of you out there that has somebody, love them. Come on. Love them. Nourish them. Give them the truth. When you're wrong, take accountability. And deal with the trauma. Because now we're bringing it home. Deal with the trauma that you've experienced in your life mm -hmm. as people, but especially to folks of color and our black folks out there, because we have been told constantly, get out your feelings. Don't worry about that. Just get out there and do what you have to do. And what happens is, and Steve Harvey is a prime example of this. Steve Harvey to me, is one of the hardest working people you're going to ever want to meet in this business. I'm going to always have love to him for him because years ago before Monique was known, he walked this woman across the parking lot and he said one day, he said, you're a millionaire and you don't even know. It. So when those individuals who happened to be white wanted to tell us about what this man was making when they were pouring Monique for doing a, uh, to do a talk show, and I had to explain to them, that's our brother. Don't tell us our business. And that man, the next day, called me up. And he invited us over to his home. And he had to explain to me that I told them what? My frat brothers can be a little fanatical. All because I said to him. Don't tell me about that man's business. Because if you do it to him. You'll you, do it to us. You'll do it to us. And... When you have an individual. Okay, y'all. So I am going to moderate this. So basically, Steve Harvey was speaking life into Monique around the time I guess she got her talk show. Sydney goes in a meeting and they are talking about what he made, as in Steve Harvey. And Sydney shuts them down and says, don't tell me his business. So the fact that Steve knew about this meant that those executives or whoever was in that room went back and told him that this was how Sydney was speaking, which makes me believe that Steve didn't care how much money they said he made.
Sydney cared. Like Sydney stands on this high moral ground that Steve didn't even care about. So I think that might kind of speak to the disconnect between Monique's management, which is Sydney, and people who want to work with Monique. On its face, him saying that, I don't know. I think people just don't want to deal with Sydney. And that's just me being honest. When I speak about trauma that goes unaddressed, there was an open letter that he wrote about people coming and barging into his dressing room. And he got ridiculed for it. He shouldn't have. Because in this business, folks think that they can walk right into your room when it's closed. And we as Black folks, we know you don't walk into nobody's closed doors. You learn that when you walked in on mama and daddy the mm. first time. Mm. And that was the last time. <laughs> Because you thought daddy was hurting mama and maybe he was, but the way she liked it, right? Okay. And you don't go back in mama's door. Well, they did that to this brother. When you don't deal with the trauma, such as, as he explained to us that day, when on his show, okay, about his show, when he said to Monique and I, they have me reviewing the black people that come on my show. Mm -hmm because they're worried about if they're not enough, if they're too many black people, if they're too many black people, we may lose the white sponsors. Come on, come on. And them niggas ain't gonna fuck it up for me. Those, and that's a quote. Those are the exact words. So Do I believe Steve Harvey said that? Yes, absolutely. I believe it, but on its face, that's some trash shit to say about the people who are going to your show to support you. You have to make sure that there are enough white people in the audience to keep your white audience satisfied per the executives. So you say them ninjas are not going to F it up for me, meaning you're going to just make sure that there's more white and Latin and Asian and what other other ethnicity in the audience. I believe Steve said every word. This is still the same man who did a memorandum to his staff and crew and told them, you are not allowed to speak to me outside of the taping. If you have anything to say to me, you need to be going through the assistance. Do not speak to me. I don't even want y'all looking at me. Yeah, I believe he said it. And I believe that he puts on an act in front of the world. I believe he said every word of that. Um, Tiffany said, but that's the world we live in. Now, Steve is a crossover act. Do I think that, you know, there's focus groups set up to maintain all of that? Probably. But I can't see him counting the black people. I... I even if the Steve Harvey was definitely a crossover, he reached a level where of success where he didn't have to comply with that kind of stuff. He didn't. So, I mean, you can take a stand on what you want, but his from his vantage point, the money was more important and the people who were coming to, you know, his fans and stuff were not. That's trash in my in my eyes. Um, just me says, why does Mo keep trying to give advice that no one is asking for? <laughs> Damn. Let her know how you really feel. Thanks for the super chat. Nisha says, daddy was probably at Club Shay Shay holding up cue cards from Monique. Those two together are gaslighters. Dangerous together. <laughs> Thank you, Nisha. Just me said, Kat already shared that story. Mo is using Shay Shay and Kat's coattails for exposure and sympathy. Sorry for so many super chats, names, but I'm I'm never gonna. You do not have to say sorry to super chat or like this video or subscribe. Thank you for um supporting the channel. I missed you the past few days, y'all. I needed a minute. It was a lot going on, and I needed a minute, but I missed y'all too. Uh, Five D Energy says at this point, like, what the f do these two want? I guess they want to make sure that nobody has them in the title of their video, i.e. Jason Lee and D.L. Hewley. Um, Scarlet Damsel said, messy, 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 LOL. I'm sure she was talking about me. I can't be. Um, Just Me says, 
This talk is the longest run-on sentence I've ever heard. Mims, they need you to moderate when they go live. I'm available for a fee. Somebody let them know. <laughs> Monique would curse me the hell out. Monique would get real Baltimore on me. Uh, Ms. Hoops Lover says, I guess next they're going to have a problem with Coach Prime for not defending them. <laughs> and I like your uh, screen pick. Uh, Five the Energy says, and I like your name. Ain't none of this making no sense. The hypocrisy, the gall, the nerve at this point. What the F do y'all want? Ain't no uplifting going on in here. It's sad. And y'all, I think that's a good place to end this. Well, so when I see and he screamed the people Come on. that came in, why would Before he do after that? The because the trauma of not having the trauma of being pushed around in this business made him get up on the stage and dog whistle to those people and say for four million dollars i'll act like the monkey and for 10 million i'll come swinging in on the vine y'all niggas will be so embarrassed by what i'm doing <laughs> he kept his word he kept his word and ask him if it's true but i don't begrudge this brother i'm telling you these things come from the trauma that we don't deal with and what we think we need to do to make it in this world. And I'm here to tell you, we are here to tell you that that's not what you have to do to make it in this world. So as I'm saying what I'm saying about this brother, it's nothing but love and respect. It's, I don't believe But that's it. part of the reason why he could not empathize with what Monique was saying, that this is not the money game, this is the integrity game. And the reason why he couldn't empathize with her because he doesn't even understand his own trauma that he's experienced. Mm. So Gary, when you say, why do you y'all always gonna, say that? You we're going to end it there. Um, y'all, thank you guys for being here. <laughs> uh, I will be back. I've been doing some stuff on Diddy. So hopefully we'll be back. I'll be back tomorrow with that. Hopefully I can get all of that squared up so I can come live tomorrow morning at eight. If not, I will see you guys at lunchtime, which will be around 1230 central time. Thank you, everybody who was here, super chatted, the new subscribers. Our new goal is now going to be 150,000 um, subscribers. I think we're at like 141. So the channel is definitely growing. I appreciate each and every one of you um, for all the new people. Uh, we have a good time around here. We respect each other even when we do not agree. So, yeah, this Diddy stuff, I got some – I've been – I will definitely let y'all know tomorrow. But uh, people are coming out of the woodwork on Diddy, and we got to talk about it. So have a good day. I mean, have a good night, y'all. Uh, and I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. <laughs>